Hello, I'm Dr. Pramila Kalra. I'm professor and head, Department of Endocrinology, Ramaya Medical College, Bengaluru, India. Today, I'll be talking about the role of an endocrinologist in transgender journey. When we talk about transgender, we need to know about gender incongruence. This is a state of having a gender identity that does not correspond to one's gender assigned at birth. The person may have distress secondary to that and then what we call it as gender dysphoria. So what problems transgender people may experience? They may have distress due to incongruence. They may have fear of disclosing their transgender identity as it may create work problems in their workplace or they may fear stigmatization, rejection. They may be worried about prejudice, discrimination as well. Sometimes they may be treated in a disrespectful way as well. And many of them may not be able to access the transgender care and may also experience sexual violence. The role of the endocrinologist comes in transgender care for gender-affirming hormone therapy, for fertility preservation options, for metabolic and bone health, for puberty blockade in children, and also the monitoring of the side effects of the gender-affirming therapy. So first of all, when the endocrinologist comes into the picture for treatment of gender incongruence, we first need to have a diagnosis. The diagnosis is done as per the WPATH guidelines, as per the DSM-5 criteria, preferably by a mental health professional. So the role of the endocrinologist comes for gender-affirming therapy. The people who seek gender-affirming therapy may have a variety of therapeutic treatments, starting from psychotherapy to hormone therapy and later gender-affirming surgery as well. When we talk about trans men, it usually involves testosterone therapy, which can be administered intramuscularly or as gels, transdermally, whereas for trans women, that is for male to female, the regimens mostly involve estrogens and antiandrogens. Before starting the gender-affirming therapy, the clinician should inform and counsel all individuals seeking the gender-affirming medical treatment regarding the fertility options for future fertility preservation. The fertility preservation trans males, that is from female to male, includes oocyte cryopreservation, embryo cryopreservation, as well as ovarian tissue cryopreservation, but most of the patients go for oocyte cryopreservation. For trans females, that is from males to females, it includes sperm cryopreservation or a surgical sperm extraction or a testicular tissue cryopreservation. And if fertility preservation is not possible, then we might have to think of other options as well. The goals of the hormone therapy are to reduce the endogenous sex hormone levels and thus reduce the secondary sexual characteristics of the individual's birth assigned gender and to replace the endogenous sex hormones with that of an individual's gender identity by giving them the gender affirming therapy of that assigned gender. Over a period of two to three years, we see the changes with the gender affirming hormone therapy. But the changes start uh, like within three months, but they progress slowly over six months. And then by one year, we see many changes. Also, the follow-up is very important. If we talk about trans males, that is the female to male, we need to do the hemoglobin, the hematocrit, the glucose values, the lipid profile, liver function tests, as well as the cardiac evaluation. BMT needs to be done. That is the bone mineral density as per the risk factors and regular screening for breast and cervical cancer as recommended for females needs to be done. When we talk about trans females, we need to watch them for venous thromboembolism as they are on estrogens. We need to check their prolactin periodically. We need to screen them for diabetes, dyslipidemia, do their liver function test again, and BMD as per the risk factors involved and cardiac evaluation and also prostate cancer screening. Lifestyle modification is the key. It has to be done for both trans males and trans females. Avoidance of smoking and alcohol is paramount. Regular exercise should be advocated and the doctor's visit as recommended at regular intervals should be done. We also need to screen for sexually transmitted diseases as well as immunization for human papilloma virus in trans males needs to be done. 
when we talk about the treatment of gender incongruence in children, we need to start the puberty blockage if indicated and if the diagnosis is confirmed by the psychiatrist at Tanner stage two, and then we need to follow them up. And after the age of 18, once they are in a position to take the decision, we discuss about the options of the gender affirming therapy with them. The children who are started on puberty blockers need to be followed up for their anthropometry, that is weight, height, their BMI, their blood pressure, and also the tanner staging needs to be followed. Every six to 12 months, some blood testing also needs to be done, including their hormonal levels, and the bone health also needs to be checked at frequent intervals because we are giving them puberty blockers, so it may have some impact on their bone health as well. So it is very important that when as endocrinologists we are treating our patients with gender-affirming hormone therapy, we need to follow them up and we need to screen them for their metabolic health, for their bone health, and also counsel them at frequent intervals because they may need a lot of support from us as well. Thank you.